Hello there friends and welcome! This is a guide with everything you need to know about how to make a very powerful strength build that dual wields colossal hammers for extreme amounts of damage, probably the highest in the game overall. Just look at poor Melania go, that's how high your damage can be in a very short burst. Your dual hammers will be capable of extremely overpowered alpha strikes to easily one-shot most common enemies and when it comes to bosses, you will also deal with them very fast, usually 3 to 4 hits. And like all of my videos, I'll guide you from the beginning to the end game, so you can find most of the powerful gear and abilities very early. So without further ado, let us get started. As usual, with starter class selection. Alright, so you probably already know Vagabond is my favorite starter class for melee characters, but for this build in particular, any other class that has high starting strength like Bandit, for example, can also work. Even Wretch can be recommended because you'll get most of your powerful gear early on. And don't forget to definitely go for the Golden Seed as your keepsake, for the nice extra flask charge. Okay, so let's get now into the fun part, the meat of the build, our Colossal Hammers, of course. The best, and the hammer with the highest damage of them all, is the Giant Crusher, which can easily achieve S scaling in strength, when fully upgraded, with the heavy affinity of course. Unfortunately you can only find a single one in the game unless you have a friend gift another copy for you, but because I know you can't always rely on that, we are also going to dual wield it with the prelate's Infernal Crozier, which possesses very similar final attack power despite only having A scaling instead of S. Regardless, you can't go wrong when power stands in these hammers, no matter the enemy you're facing. Just look at how absolutely amazing our final attack rating score is when buffed to the max, close to 1800 with both our hammers. And the best thing is you can find both of them pretty early in the game as well, so here's how it goes. Now both of these require you to cross into the Altus Plateau region, something that is pretty easy to do. I've explained it many times through my build videos, but basically, for a fast way, get one half of the Dectus Medallion at Fort Faroff and the other from Fort Height. So long as you have your horse, you don't have to fight any of the enemies on the way. And there are two easy teleporters into the Kaelid region. Anyways, let's first go with the best of the weapons. To find the Giant Crusher Colossal Hammer, simply head directly south from the Altar Wall Phantom Tree Grace, where I have the blue marker set here. You'll soon reach this barricade here, and I suggest you go around it, because a big enemy will spawn and kill the other enemy, so you want to go for the back of the carriage, open the chest and get your giant crusher, before the ulcerated tree spirit can react to your presence. See, it's not doing anything, that's why you go through the back. Don't worry if you die, because the chest should remain open, which makes looting it easier. The giant crusher will require at least 40 strength to two-hand it properly, as that increases your strength by one times and a half, for 60, which is the required amount. Thankfully, there are many ways of highly increasing your strength even early on. The first one is Radagon Sword Seal for plus 5, and you can get it at Fort Faroff, which you went through anyways for the half of the Dactus Medallion. This talisman does increase the damage you take by a little bit, but for most of the early and the mid game, it doesn't matter. It is just here to support you before you can get enough strength by leveling up, to properly wield your hammers. Second we have the Strength Knot Crystal tier for plus 10. This tier is to the northeast of the Stormhill Shack. You'll soon see a giant in the distance, which means you are on the right path. And the tier will be at this bow right here. So that's 29 strength we already have. Now we just need to level up to around level 20 and we can equip our weapon just fine. You don't even need 20,000 souls to get you 20, which is pretty easy to do even at the early game. Remember you can always kill the Dragon Mother, also very close to Fort Faroff's entrance, easily done with any bleed weapon, like the Morning Star from Gatefront Ruins. Now that we have our Giant Crusher, the next step is to highly increase its damage, first through the Ash of War Determination. When you activate it, your weapon will glow which empowers your next blow by around 60%, which is great considering how high our damage is with colossal weapons. The good thing about determination is you can get it very early as well. 
to find a termination from the Agu Lake North Grace, you want to hit the bridge right here to the southeast, where I have the blue marker set. Once you hit the start of the bridge, simply defeat the Rolling Scarab here, close to the enemies. Eventually, we'll upgrade this to Royal Knight's Resolve, but for the beginning of the game, this is the way to go. Alright, so the next step is to find our Prelate's Infernal Crozier, to do a wield it with the Giant Crusher. It is to the west of the Altos Plateau at the Mount Gilmir region, inside Fort Leif. I guess that's how you pronounce it, assuming it's the same as Blaif, the Half-Wolf. Anyways, the closest grace is Seathwater Terminus, but if you don't know how to reach it, from the Grand Lift of Dectus, simply keep going northwest, past the first Altos Plateau grace, then the Erd Tree Gazing Hill, the northwest again, until you reach Seathwater River, which you can cross all the way here to eventually reach Seathwater Terminus. So from the Seathwater Terminus, Grace, you can already see the fort there in the distance and we have to enter it. Really just a matter of going straight ahead. Then to the side and climb the stairs to enter the fort. Now you have to defeat the Prelate right there. If you're finding him difficult to defeat, Go for jump attacks, and after a single hit, back away to bait another one of his attacks, while you go for one more jump attack, and repeat. The good thing is, the first time you defeat him, he'll always drop the Prelate's Inferno Crusher. Also, don't forget to upgrade both your Giant Crusher and Inferno Hammer to, at the very least, plus 12, you can easily do it. First, by getting Infinite Smithing Stones number 1 and 2, by defeating the Crystallian boss at the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. And second, infinite smithing stones plus 3 and 4 by opening the first chest at the Seal Tunnel, right at the Altos Plateau. Now, actually equipping both of your hammers at the same time early on is probably a bit overwhelming, because they do require a lot of strength. You won't be able to two-hand your giant crusher, so you'll need 60 strength instead of just 40. The earliest you'll be able to do it as a Vagabond is at level 40, by simply spending all your level points into strength, while also having, the same as usual, Radagon Source Seal and the plus 10 strength tier. Do note that you don't actually need both of them so early, even just two-handing the Giant Crusher with Determination is enough to easily handle early enemies. Now, when it comes to equipment load, because they are also very heavy weapons, you'll probably be overloaded, but that is pretty easy to fix. As you can see, my equipment load here, just at level 40 with 16 Endurance, is close to 260, all thanks to the Winged Crystal tier, that you can also find at the Altos Plateau, right at this part of the map, directly ahead of the Hermit's Merchant Shack, in a bowl surrounded by some school snake enemies. You won't always have to rely on this, but for the early game it's golden, and especially for boss battles and PvP as well, because of the 3 minute duration. If the duration ends, so long as you end with at least heavy load, as you support both your hammers, that's enough. The next step is to upgrade both your colossal hammers with the heavy affinity for even higher strength scaling, which means of course a lot more damage to us as we are mostly strength focused. Thankfully this can also be done very early in the game at Stormvale Castle. If you haven't reached the Great Hall yet, then well, from the Rampart Tower Grace, exit the Grace Room. Now you'll want to jump over to that roof there, so back away a bit, start running and jump right over this edge here onto the rooftop, then down again. At the bottom, simply enter the room here, and there we go, you're already at the Great Hall. Now keep going ahead, defeating the Grafted Scion enemy is pretty easy with both your hammers. From the portrait, keep going straight ahead, and right before this door, turn to your right and follow into the courtyard. Now use a Stone Sword key to unlock the fog wall and the Iron Wet Blade will be right here, at the corpse close to the fire. Now, since we are already at Stormvale Castle, the next step is empowering our jump attack damage through the Claw Talisman. 
Jump attacks will be your main source of damage for your Colossal Hammers, not only because of how great the damage is, but also they are very fast. Perfect for the faster Elden Ring enemies and bosses. The Colossal Talisman is pretty close to the Rampart Tower Grace. The same place you went for the heavy affinity whetstone. You'll want to jump on the roof again. Except this time, instead of dropping down to the left, keep going straight ahead and climb up the columns here. Then just keep going. Now see the enemies there? I suggest you defeat them before you proceed up the ladder, where your talisman will be right at the top. Otherwise the enemies will interfere and probably force you down the ladder. Now for another very nice boost to jump attack damage we have the Raptor's Black Feathers armor. This does stack with the Claw Talisman for even bigger damage. You can find it at the Sage's Cave in the Altos Plateau region. There are a lot of illusory walls you'll have to go through until you can eventually find the chest with this armor set after making a pretty easy jump by following the path past the Raptor's Talon's Claw pretty easy to reach, if you know where you're going. Alright, so the last thing to do to truly empower our Colossal Hammer character to the max is to upgrade our Determination Ash of War to Royal Knight's Resolve. This is pretty much just an upgrade over it, you gain an 80% boost to your next attack instead of 60%. And remember, you can actually buff both your weapons with this skill. For your left weapon, first two-handed by pressing Y plus LB, then L2 to activate it. Now go back to dual wielding, press L2 again, and it will work on your second weapon. So both our weapons now have the glowing determination or Royal Knight's resolve effect. Getting this skill, however, can be tricky, so I'll guide you along the entire path. If you already have it or don't care for it, you can skip right ahead to the stat allocation section, as all my videos are timed. So the long but also the simplest way of getting World Knight's Resolve is by starting at the Temple of Eyeglay Grace at Volcano Manor. You can go to the north here and then to your left and there should be a lift here. If you haven't unlocked it however don't worry because I'll guide you along the way. So to unlock the lift go right of the Grace then climb the stone platform. Now go straight ahead, snake across the path here and see this pillar, jump on it, then drop down the path. Now just follow the path straight ahead past the fire slug enemies. Drop here, then keep going ahead. Jump, and you want to reach the other side of the path there, past the lava lake. Ignore the abductor virgin enemy, and jump on top of this open window path here. Now to your right, up this path, past the snake enemies, go up, enter this section and the elevator will be to your left, right here. Right, so after unlocking the lift, you just want to go straight ahead, all along the way, past the first snake enemy here, and the second one here. Enter this door with the two torches, now the door to the right, climb the stairs, to your left here, keep going, and enter the door here. You'll have to use a stone sword key to unlock this area. Keep going. Now what you want to do is drop down this set of cages. The first one here, then here, another one here. Now jump on the wooden ledge and drop down the other cages. The last one here. Now you're free to drop down to the bottom. You just take a little bit of health damage. And after dropping down, go past the door with the torch to the right. And Royal Knight's Resolve will be at this corpse here, close to the fireplace beneath the portrait. I have already looted it. Alright, so let's now at last get into our stat and attribute point allocation. I'll give you stat ranges so you can end up at something like 120 if you prefer. Strength is of course your main attribute. You'll need a minimum of 60 to properly wield both your hammers. But if you want to fully min-max your damage, then 80 is the recommended stopping point. Especially as we have very high strength scaling with both our weapons. Remember, there are plenty of ways to increase your strength without leveling up, like Radagon's Sword Seal, 
the strength tier and also Godric's great rune for a plus 5 to all your stats. Vigor is another pretty important stat too, but since we do a massive amount of damage through alpha strikes to easily one shot most normal enemies, and when it comes to bosses it doesn't take that long for us to defeat them, I wouldn't say you need to fully max your Vigor, I recommend 40 to 60. The rest of your remaining points should definitely go into Endurance, but you can always rely on the Winged Crystal tier, as I've explained before, to retain light load even with heavy armor while wielding both your hammers without high endurance. Depending on how high you want your character to go, you might also consider investing into faith. 20 to 25 should be enough, just so you can cast some nice buffs like Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength for even higher damage, but there are some alternatives to it, as I will soon show you. Alright, so let's now talk about the remaining gear slots to fully empower our character to the max. So besides your heavy colossal hammers, I also recommend you go with a light sword, like a short sword, just so you can have the seppuku skill. Yes, even though this isn't a bleed build, the bonus to damage you get with seppuku and then the Lord of Blood's Exaltation plus White Mask is simply too good to pass as it is percentile based and we already have very high base damage by default. When it comes to armor, besides the White Mask and the Raptor's Black Feathers, well, the other slots are up to you. As for Talismans, the Ritual Sword Talisman, as always, for even higher damage when your hit points are at maximum, perfect for our extremely damaging Alpha Strikes, to jump attacks, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, as I've said before, the Claw Talisman too, for even higher jump damage, the last slot is up to you. I have the Old Lord's Talisman here just for higher duration to my buffs, but you can also go with Dragon Crest Great Shield for higher physical damage negation, the Ritual Shield Talisman also for higher negation, the Dagger Talisman to enhance your critical damage, as we do get easy criticals from stance breaks with our Colossal Hammers due to their massive stagger and poise damage. And that's pretty much it. And if you don't want to rely on faith, Exalted Flash to make up for Flame Grant Me Strength. Also, if you don't want to use Golden Vow, you can use the buff from the Commander's Standard ability for a higher effect, although at lower duration. Now, just before finishing this guide, I also want to show an example of how to properly buff your character as to achieve the massive attack power and result I have here. So we have 878 by default, adds the Ritual Sword Talisman, and we gain close to 100. Now I'm going the Faith path, so cast Golden Vow, Flame grant me strength, use Seppuku, ideally you want to heal for the max hit point bonus, and then you're free to activate your Knight's Resolve. So now we have 1759, more than double our initial amount. And you think they said strength builds were bad in Elden Ring, right? Alright friends, so this was it for my ultimate damage strength build. If you found this guide useful, then please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member or leaving a nice super thanks. As always, don't forget to comment down below if you think I missed something or there's another build you want me to make. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends.